And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at a train game from Queen Games called German Railways. Now, German Railways is the first in the Iron Horse collection, um, so I guess there's going to be more games like this, But and it's licensed from Winsome Games, who's well known for their train games. This game reminded me a lot of Chicago Express. I'm kind of surprised that Chicago Express isn't number one, and this is number two, but I'm sure train gamers will tell me that there are very subtle differences there that I'm not seeing. But there certainly is differences between this and Chicago Express. If you remember back to my review of Chicago Express, or at least when I talked about it on my show, I was not really a fan of it. Will this one change my mind? Let's see. So here we have the uh, board, which is a map of part of Germany here. And you'll see on the outside of the board are the eight different railroad companies. There's different colors for them. Um, and you're supposed to put the shares for each company. Now there's only three shares per company uh, on the outside of those, as well as all the trains for each company. And each company has a different amount of trains that they have there. In fact, each country has a special ability and this is one of the problems I have with the game, I'll say it up front, is that uh, the special abilities aren't shown on the board. They're not shown on the stocks. It would be really nice if they were shown on the stocks, really. Um, and so you have to look in the rule book to see what the special abilities are. And, you know, you, it, it's not that hard, but, you know, you, it's hard to remember sometimes which one's which because they have different special abilities. But anyhow, at the beginning of the game, each one share of each company is auctioned off. And when players buy a share of a company, that money doesn't go to the bank, rather it goes to the company. So you don't want to win a share with too low of a bid because then that company doesn't have any money to work with. When each company on the board, you'll notice down here is that there's an income track for each of the companies on the board. And that, you can see for example here that blue and black are on income three, brown is on income two, and the rest are on income one. That's based on where they are right now. Each city that a train is part of gives it income of one. So yellow has an income of one. If yellow builds another train here, yellow's income would go up to two, then three, then four. And it doesn't increase when you go into areas that don't have cities, uh, but there are a few cities on the board which have larger numbers in them. For example, Hamburg there, if you go there, your income will go up by three. If you connect to Berlin, your income will go up by three. And so some of this, the companies, like the blue company here, starts in a city of three, which is why their income's higher. So players will always look at the, their shares that they hold, add the income of those shares together, and they'll keep track of that on the board over here to show what their income is. It's basically equal to all the shares that they own and then the value, the income of those companies. So anytime a company's income goes up, both the company's and player's shares are both adjusted. Now, the way each game session goes, or each round of the game goes, you're gonna take a bang here, and you're gonna look and see who's in the lead. So for example here, red is in the lead. So I'm gonna put one token for red in the bag. Then white's in second place, so white will have two tokens put in the bag. Then blue is in third place, so blue will have three tokens in the bag. Green is in fourth place, so green gets four tokens into the bag. Yellow's in last place, so yellow gets five tokens into the bag. Now these are all shaken around and such. If there was a tie, that you know you'd both get the same amount of tokens. And then you pull them off. So I pull out a blue, and then I pull out a white, and then I pull out another blue, and then I pull out a yellow, and then I pull out a red. So green doesn't get an action this turn because I didn't pull out any of the things, and blue gets two actions. So you can see the probability is of the person in last place getting the most actions, but even though there was five yellows in the bag, they only got one, and even though there was only one red action thing in the bag, it got pulled out. And so this will happen uh, each turn, and it, the points will change each turn, and when it's your turn, you're gonna go through these five actions up here, and on your turn you can pass, which does happen. You can put another share up for auction. You pick any company, and you put that share up for auction, and then the money goes into that company again. 
or you can increase one of the railroads and by that you pay money from the railroad and there's each of the different spots on the board cost different amounts of money to put it in and you have to kind of expand out from where you are and when you go into the different cities your income will go up as I said earlier and then each of these companies has a special ability. For example, when you can put out three locomotives total, but the black company can put out four, which makes sense because they start all the way off in the corner, and the orange company can only put out two because they're so close to Berlin and other big cities. The blue company pays one less when it's building. The brown company doesn't pay extra when it builds into a city that someone else is in because you have to pay an extra one whenever you put into another city. Uh, so if orange wanted to go there, uh, I'd have to pay an additional one. And the yellow doubles the income of its biggest city. Uh, the red, its first build is free. The purple can only spend $5 or towers most when it's building track. And the green doesn't pay any dividends until it connects with Berlin, which means it's going to connect to Berlin at the first opportunity, of course. Now, when two railroad companies meet for the first time, yellow and orange meet here, Every single company will pay dividends. Everyone will get money equal to that company's uh, spot here on the track times the number of certificates they own for that company. And the two companies that met together, or the, I'm sorry, the company that initiated them meeting together, in this case, let's, it was Orange, was the last one to put it down, they will get double that amount. So everyone gets double that amount of money, if you own a share of orange, everyone else gets the amount of money which basically is equal to their income. And then the game proceeds. When every company on the board is connected to at least two other companies, and or that's not possible because of the, all the trains are gone or whatever, the game will end. And whoever has the most money at that point in time wins. You don't cash in shares or anything. So you have to keep an eye out for when that happens. Um, uh, by the way, when companies meet, for the first time only, they will score, but they can meet multiple companies. So if red came up here and met yellow, there would be another scoring round. So it'll be many, many scoring rounds as different companies will bump into each other as they're building across the board. Anyway, person with the most money, winner. Okay, well, first of all, I was not happy, as I sh showed you there, with the graphical design of this game. And there's a couple reasons for that. Several of the train colors were the same as player colors, but not all of them, which can lead to some confusion. Um, I would forget, you know, like, let's say you're red and you, your, your income went up, I might move the train's income because it's a red color. I'm like, oh, that's right, you're not the red train company. Some of the colors of the train companies, the shares especially, if you do not have the most bright lighting possible, were difficult to tell apart. And then... Finally, like I said, they don't mention the special abilities anywhere. The shares look very similar. When you see a share, you have to kind of squint at it. What company is that for that exactly? I would have had different pictures and different things on them. So I thought that was a missed opportunity, and I think that will, that will hurt the, the playability of the game because you will struggle to get past those points at some time. But let's take a look at the game. The game itself is an interesting one where you're buying shares and, and, I, and I like the concept of buying shares and sometimes deliberately bought, paying a lot for a share just so that company has a lot of money to work with. Okay, that's an interesting idea. It's not unique. A lot of train games do that all the way up to the biggest ones, the 18XX series. But the putting the money in the companies, interesting idea. Uh, the companies having different abilities and connecting with each other to get money, good. Um, it, in fact, to me, the most fascinating idea of the game is that that shared ownership in companies so that if I have a share and you have a share and the third person has a share, we're all work together to make that company great. Or if I have two shares and you have one share, then we're both working together, but you're not nearly as excited as I am because I'm getting double what you get. And I think knowing how to spread your shares in this game, because you're gonna own maybe five or six of them, well, depending on how many players. In a three-player game, you'll own a lot more shares. In a five-player game, you'll own fewer. But depending on which companies you own is how you win the game. So you have to think about this very carefully, and you almost make temporary alliances with other players to make your companies do well. However, this game has one huge feature 
which is going to either you're going to find interesting or it's going to turn some people off and that's putting those tokens in a bag and pulling them out. Now, putting the tokens in a bag and pulling them out to determine actions is not a new thing in this game. In fact, it was used most frequently in a game called Pillars of the Earth. But in Pillars of the Earth, you threw a bunch of tokens in a bag and you pulled them out to determine order. And if yours were pulled out last, oh well. But they were all pulled out. In this game, they aren't all pulled out. So as you saw in my example, you saw that the one player was completely shut out and he had four of his tokens in the bag. That is how this game works and I think well, I know a lot of people are going to hate that feature of the game. They will absolutely despise it. Because for one thing, it's boring to sit around and not do anything for a whole turn because you didn't get any actions. I mean, sure, you can jump in on auctions, but the people of actions, you have so much power when you have an action because you can connect trains, you can determine when income happens, you can build the train systems up the way you want to, you pick what shares go up for auction, and that's a big deal. You say, well, that's only fair the person in last place. It's a catch-up mechanic. Yeah, but that person who's in first place can still get one out. And even more damagingly, the person in second place will get two, and they could easily get both of them out there and get two actions out of five, and they're winning, and they go ahead. Now you will say, well, that will roll out over the course of the game. Yes and no. Sure, that kind of luck rolls out over the course of the game, but there will be turns where it is critical that you have a turn and simply due to blind luck, you don't. And so I thought it was a neat concept. I liked the idea, but the execution can be incredibly frustrating. Now, maybe you like that kind of frustration and to work around it and see how that works, but I think a lot of people, that will drive them absolutely insane. And that one mechanic, pulling those out and putting them, will make or break the game for them. I, you know, usually I say, well, you know, you might like this mechanic. I think whether you like this mechanic or not will completely determine your enjoyment of the game. What did I think? I thought it was interesting, but there were turns that I was very frustrated. The rest of the game, the, the train game itself was interesting. I liked the building of the railroads. I liked how you spread out and went different ways. Uh, Chicago Express drove me nuts because all the trains basically went the same way here. Trains can go in different directions, which I thought was, a, was a, an improvement on that. Still kind of weird that there's only three shares of each company, but I think I'm learning to, to enjoy this style game. But that mechanic, I think I don't enjoy it because I, there are people at my table are going to get incredibly irritated at certain points in the game because their colors just aren't pulled at all and that will totally throw their game off and they just sit there and do nothing. And you guys know, or if you watch enough of my reviews, you know that I'm not a big fan of sitting around and doing nothing and kind of watching the game play without you. So between that and the component issues, I really can't strongly recommend this or even regularly recommend this. I think there will be a, a subgroup of people out there who will really enjoy this game. But with train gamers, with their attention on detail and how they like it, I think that mechanic is going to even turn off many of them. This is definitely a try before you buy. German Railways. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Hey, shut the door! <laughs> <laughs>